Hello and welcome back to this channel that uh, YouTube algorithm will completely destroy because I took a little break. You're here because you want to know how much I made at Fort Bubble. Or at least I think that's why you're here, I don't know. Yeah, I had a great time at Fort Bubble. If you don't know what Fort Bubble is, it's probably like the biggest kind of indie uh, comic festival, illustration and comic festival in the UK. It's in near Leeds in Harrogate and it's absolutely incredible. I've always wanted to go. I've never been able to go as a visitor, let alone exhibit. So this year I got accepted. You have to apply to have a stall and uh, I thought, no, probably not gonna accept me, but they did and it was amazing. And it was totally worth it for all the right reasons. It was worth it because I got loads of inspiration. I got to tick off a dream of exhibiting at Fort Bubble and going to Fort Bubble. It's worth it in the sense that it's like a community feeling and it was so great to be with the right audience if that made sense. Not with like someone's returning to their home so I'll wait two seconds. I don't know if you can hear that. It connected you with the right audience. I feel like sometimes Comic Cons they're kind of more superhero comics mainstream stuff that is totally not me because it's just not my vibe i guess not not that there's anything wrong with that but it's just not you know it doesn't it doesn't connect whereas in fort bubble i felt like there was plenty of people that might like my stuff and it was really really nice and it was interesting as well to see what people picked up um, for instance, I have this cat print that did really well, which I've always thought, like, oh, I quite like this print, but is it the print, you know, I don't know, I didn't like it that much, to be honest, <laughs> as much as my other stuff, so there you go, it shows you what people like organically as well, because when you're doing stuff online, it's kind of different than people just browsing your stuff and picking it up, it's more focused and I think people choose things differently online. Anyway, the point is that we're going to get into the grips of things and I'm just going to show you some clips. The reason that Kubo is here up on my desk is because he's not very well. He has cancer and he's um, been getting chemo so we had to take him with us to Fort Bubble. So he came with us in the car. We had to get like an expensive hotel because the original Airbnb that we got with our friends didn't accept cats, even though they said they were pet friendly. They only accept dogs, so that sucked. Um, because he's just a little baby and he doesn't do anything. He doesn't scratch or... But whatever, it's fine. Um, so we had to get, like, a, a hotel right next to the convention centre so we could keep checking on him. Um, and he was fine. He loved it. He was like, yeah, a whole hotel room to myself without the other cats. Perfect. Um, yeah, but he's doing good, uh, he's, he's alright, um, but yeah, that's the update on Kubo, um, we're trying not to think about it a little bit, but full bubble, it went really well, and, um, yeah, I'll give you the, the, the lowdown now. Just what I do, like, a quick summary of stuff that I got there as well, at full bubble, because it's interesting, um, got this little to-do uh, list thing. This is Chris's and he's already written some stuff there but I don't want to you know show you guys but this is by Ellen Stubbings illustration which is super cute. Just really quick sweet. This is a little sketchbook that they were selling at Fort Bowl. This is something Chris got doing some sketches and uh, this is the design of the Fort Bubble poster. So this is by one illustrator that came there from America and she was selling prints for like 40 quid and it's quite expensive for me, but it was cool. This was a little uh, zine that I got, uh, which I thought was so cool, like the way that she's done this. Uh, it actually goes this way. But I really like that, and I really want to make one now that's like this. Um, I won't spoil the end, but it was really sweet and funny, and I really liked it. And um, This is by Juno.art. I also got these two little comics that are like... Uh, the risograph sort of style, but I don't know if they are actually. I think they've just that style, like kind of loose, really nice. This one is the horror comic, and this one is uh, just like a sweet little comic, I think. I haven't actually read them yet, I need to get on that. 
these are comics by my friends and they're really cool they're about bees and yeah just awesome awesome work he's working on the third run uh this was my table buddies stuff really nice uh interesting comics really thought-provoking and this was a comic that i got for chris it's uh like a D, &D style comic because he likes D, D and it's just like lots of little stories about D, D. but also there's like a fun sized cutout thing which is quite interesting this was one i got for chris because i really want to do a comic in this style with him where i'm writing it and he's drawing it because chris kind of has this similar style to this and this is very like dragon ball esque and it just looks fun and cute and very inspirational and this is kind of something that maybe we want to work on together in the future this is my friend yaim kayla's new book as well called sorry dude i don't know how many food it's sort of a children's uh poem book and it's so sweet so cute uh go check them out this was a little zine about cats uh because I saw this uh, print and I really liked it but it was like 20 quid so I couldn't really stretch out but this was a cheaper option and I could still get like the little sketches and I just I really like this because it looks a lot like Gigi as well I just think it's really nice and loose and sweet and also I got this uh, from the Shortbox stall. Shortbox are a new indie publishers i hope i'm getting that right but they've published a lot of really like cool looking books online and they often have like online conventions which is pretty cool very inspirational i would love to be able to do a style like this i also got this bookmark which i think is really sweet and uh, the adventure starts with you it says heaps of uh, business cards and zines so these oh, i also got these little post-it notes because that looks like pesto I thought that was really cute. Uh, this is Michaela and Yayan's zine. They gave these away free. Just fun, like, little zine. And then this little girl came up to my table. And we did an art trade. And it was so cute. These are her little zines. And they're actually so funny. Because it was like, this is her Beano zine. And in it, she's like, if you don't like Beano, you won't like me. And she talks about, like, why Beano is a good comic. And then it's, like, origin of Bat Kid. And it's so funny. Because she's like... I turn into Bat Kid, and then she's like, at the end, you can be anything you want to be if you believe in yourself. And she says, no, wait, I read that on Wikipedia. <laughs> so good. So I gave her a little art trade. I, I said, you can have anything on my table because you gave me those zines. It was really sweet. And I, of course, I've got loads of business cards, um, which is really nice to get. I'm so glad that I printed some business cards as well because people were just picking them up and... I think it's a really great way to just follow artists that you like as well. If you can't afford to buy anything, it's a really nice uh, way to connect with people. I also got a couple of prints that I've put on the wall. And uh, yeah, this one is by Alex, who I met, who is a viewer actually, which was really cool, and a friend of a friend. So yeah, he's bringing out this uh, book on Only Press soon. So that's crazy cool, and uh, yeah, met a lot of people, was super awesome. So let's get into how much I earn. So what I was doing each day, and this is pretty funny, but so what I was doing each day was writing down everything that I made. Um, just because a friend of mine, Sarah, she said that it's interesting to look back on so you can see what times you didn't make anything you can compare it if you do like another convention if you're not selling it's not going to get you down because you're like oh I remember I didn't sell then and what times do quite well so I wrote down what I sold and then the time and how much each thing cost so a pin and a print was my first sale and I was so thrilled I had someone come to my desk at 12 19 on the Saturday and she said she was a viewer and she's been watching my stuff for ages and thank you so much that honestly made my day my weekend because it was just so kind and I don't know it's like still I still can't believe that people watch my stuff but to have someone come up and be like oh I'm a fan and I buy all your comics was so nice of you and that made 24 pounds because of that which was like a big chunk of my profits of that day so it was really kind um I'm sorry I can't remember your name because my brain doesn't work very well and I, I'm sorry 
But yeah, so this, I've noted down all, everything I made. And what I had was a square reader, which is this little thing. So I had an app on my phone which told me how much I made each day because mostly I took in money from uh, the, the reader. And what happened was any money that I made in cash, I kind of spent on other stuff because I feel like if you're at Fort Bubble, it makes sense to buy other people's things and that interest you because it's there, you're there for inspiration as well as just like, not just to earn money, unless you're a, a big, big shop. Um, so, okay, so on the Saturday I earned £162 and my average sale was £6 and I had 26 sales. So throughout the day I had 26 people buy, but I probably had a couple more than that because I had people um, using cash. So I think I made about £200 that day which is crazy to me, um, really kind of everyone. And then on the Sunday, it was a bit, it started out um, better because I could see that I already made like 20 quid before 11, whereas on the first day I didn't make any sales before 11, but then it slowed right down and only made 76 pounds that day in um, online sales. There was a few cash things, but so I probably made about, 300 pounds over the whole weekend which honestly does not cover the cost of travel print anything but it was entirely worth it for other reasons inspiration to meet people i said that i'm just completely psyched now to work on the next thing and also get to see what people liked what people enjoyed buying for instance that cat print that i was talking about you can see here that it's sold, 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 sold. And that's two pounds per print. Um, and I probably got a hundred of them, if I'm honest, for 20 to 30 pounds. I don't remember the exact amount now. So if I got a hundred of them for 20 pounds, or t I think it might be 24 pounds, but so let's say 20, if I got a hundred of them, 20, and then they all sell for two pounds, that's 200 quid um straight off the bat and that's what 180 quid of profit for a little print and that's crazy those are probably like the meat and potatoes of people's businesses these little prints and stuff so like obviously comics are the big seller this is what i want to sell this is what i want to do but to fund that I, you probably need to have some prints and things some stickers and other stuff on your table but yeah it was so fun and that's how much i made and these are my notes, they're very scribbly. Next time I'm going to take a notebook. Um, but it's really interesting to look back and see. And I'm really glad that I made like a list of everything and then the times as well. So that's it, that's the money I made. So that was it and I hope you enjoyed this short little vlog and information about exhibiting and what I made. I wanted to be really honest because I think it's important. And maybe some people can judge whether it would be worth it for them. Uh, of course, I've said already that it's worth it for me because the wealth of in in inspiration and information that you get and meeting people and things like that was just incredible. And it was just what I needed at the right time because, you know, your girl's burnt out after making a comic for the last year. It was nice to be like, actually, I'm going to make something again because... It was so inspiring to be around these creative people and looking at their products and seeing what they made and how it inspires you is really, really cool. And it's worth it. So, yeah, that's my information on football and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. All five of you, because YouTube hates me now. <laughs> but thank you for watching anyway. Hope you have a good uh, day, I was going to say, but I don't know your life. <laughs> Alright, bye!